What a, what a fine crowd here, ready to rock and roll with you. Uh, thank you, thank you, friends. Uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful. Let's, uh, let's welcome some of our guests. Jimmy Gutterman is the co-author of the worst rock and roll records of all time. This is a fan's guide to the stuff you love to hate. Also joining us from WZLX Classic Radio, the host of the Lost 45s on Sunday nights, Barry Scott, and program director over at, i got to get used to saying this now, <laughs> WZOU, Sonny Joe White. How about a hand for our guest today? Because, uh, because Sonny, I know that uh, spelling counts for a lot in radio. <laughs> I'll make sure. We'd welcome everybody. Good to have you here. Uh, Jimmy, first of all, uh, among those that you think are responsible for the worst rock and roll records of all time are uh, Elvis Presley, Billy Joel, whose whole career you damn pretty much, and uh, and Chuck Berry. Now, can you tell us why on those counts? For the most part, what we tried to do in the book, with Billy being an exception to the people you wrote about there, we write about bad records by people who are inherently interesting people. The Rolling Stones, great band. Chuck Berry at his peak, really fantastic. Um, for the Chuck Berry song, what we focused in on was a record he put out in 1972 called My Dingling. Now, Chuck Berry is probably the greatest lyricist in the history of rock and roll. Brown Eyed Handsome Man, Let It Rock, Bye Bye Johnny. I could just list them. We could take up the rest of the show. He's just a tremendous performer. But not My Dingling. Not My Dingling. In 1972, yeah. <laughs> he was kind of reduced to... Uh, you know, bathroom joke, double entendres. That was yeah, funny to yeah. only the very young or the very drunk. But Billy Joel's whole career, you, you say, is, uh, is virtually worthless from a rock and roll standpoint. Right. Well, Billy just happened to be here. Why is that? Well, it seemed that from our point of view, and I didn't write this myself, I wrote it with an old friend from high school, a fellow right. named Owen O'Donnell. And from what we were looking at, that Billy has been one of these people who has been spending much of his career striving for the sort of rock and roll legitimacy that he really hasn't earned. And as a, as a manipulator of, of, you know, M.O.R. styles, Tim Pinelli type styles, he's, he's probably pretty good, but for what he says he is and what he really is are two different things. He periodically makes rock attempts, none of which are convincing. Sonny Joe, you're getting, you're getting the best laugh out of that. Why, yeah. Are you more of a Billy Joel uh, backer than uh, certainly Jimmy is? Well, I think you just cleared it up, that he, uh, he doesn't necessarily emulate you know, some of the, the older M.O.R. artists. But, I mean, New York State of Mind is a great song. Uh, An Innocent Man, I think, is a great song, both lyrically and performance-wise. Those are great songs. He's not a rock and roller, you're right. And, I, you know, I never got the sense that he tried to be a rock and roller, well, except he, for Mary and Christy Brinkley, you know. And mm. Well, he had that whole record, Glass <laughs> Houses, which was an attempt to establish rock legitimacy. But marrying a model, that's a good way that's to pretty be rock and roll. That's pretty roll. Mick yeah. Jagger. Pretty yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Barry, what's your definition of what uh, good rock and roll is? Now, in the Lost 45s, is it all good songs you're bringing back, or just songs that have a curiosity factor? No, most of the Lost 45s are pretty much uh, on his list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, they tend to be the worst songs, but mainly the, the songs that I play in the Lost 45s era are the tunes that people when they were 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old in the early 70s in the Partridge Family era and the Osmonds era and the Bay City Rollers and on to the early disco era with Kung Fu Fighting and songs like that. With songs that people who in Can that age... Can you imagine group, anybody saying, could you play our song, Kung Fu Fighting? Oh, they they have, have, they thousands do. of people who call and ask them to play that song. But, yeah. but those people who were in their early formative years then, um, those were part of their lives. And now they're 25, 35 years old. We have old. an audience full of, of uh, people in the 12 to 14 uh, Who might not remember grade. the... Uh, the Bay <laughs> no, but, but what, what would be... Does anybody know the Bay City Rollers? Really? Mm -hmm. Just a few. The same people yeah. who know Bobby Sherman, whom we're going to talk with <laughs> later in the show. What are likely to be their lost 45s in 10 years? I'd say the new kids on the block. Oh, <laughs> you didn't. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, when uh, when Barry's you know, talking about yeah. guilty pleasures in a lot of ways, records that you love to hate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that all the people who call up his show asking to hear Billy Don't Be a Hero, asking to hear The Night Chicago Died, that sort of thing, they're getting a kick out of hearing it. That is yeah, not yeah. just because they... Well, so a lot of those it. songs, too, Jimmy, are, are songs of the time. I mean, like, Billy Don't Be a Hero. We were going through the war, and, you know, we could relate. Uh, the Terry Jack song that you played. You could relate to Billy Don't Be a Hero. I can't at the time. Well, he said at, the it time here. <laughs> at the time, you know, there was a war going on. It was the end of the whole Vietnam War, and we were wrapping it up. And See, if they had the just time. dropped copies of that song on the North <laughs> Vietnamese, Vietnam, it would have yeah. been over quicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that song in particular, and, and songs like that, if you looked at the 70s, 70% of the number one songs in the 70s, like Billy Don't Be a Hero and Seasons in the Sun, 
aren't played at all anymore. Yeah, now you, you've there's got a whole a niche there that people aren't playing the songs at all, mm -hmm. and adults do look fondly back upon those sure. songs, whether they were good songs or not. You've got a guest on your show Sunday night that you basically can't stand, David Cassidy. <laughs> David from Cassidy the and Susan family. Day together will yeah. go on Sunday. Yeah. Susan Day. <laughs> yeah. Now, David Cassidy uh, or, or Bobby Sherman, whom we'll talk to later, are these? All right. So, uh, all right. Joining us on the phone is, is a, a name and a, and a face and a voice that I'm sure many of you are going to remember. Uh, our own producer of the show told me that she was a Bobby Sherman fan because of Here Comes the Bride. How many of you remember that TV series? Uh, All right, and also Jim uh, Bobby, you with us? Born yes, sir. Show. Good morning. Good morning. Good to talk with you. Uh, we're talking about uh, rock and roll stars past and present today, and uh, your biggest hit was Easy Come, Easy Go. Is that right? Uh, I, actually, between Easy Come, Easy Go and Julie, Do You Love Me, I think Julie oh, uh, right, of course. That, uh, that's outsold right. uh, Easy Come, Easy Go by about 100,000, uh, uh -huh. so it, well, I basically almost went platinum. Now, you were sort of the teen beat cover boy for a while. <laughs> if you want to call me that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was saying, some of the younger, some of the younger uh, kids here who, who didn't recognize your name, I said, he was sort of the Joey McIntyre of his time. <laughs> then, they knew what I was, uh, then they knew what I was talking about. Barry, have you had uh, Bobby on your show? Yeah, a couple times. Yeah, Barry Scott is here from the Loft 45. And yeah, good morning, Barry. Hi, Bobby. Good. <laughs> now, what are you doing now, Bobby? Oh, basically, uh, we've got a couple of things happening. We've got a CD that's coming out uh, actually this month uh, that's got some of the greatest hits, plus uh, a couple of things that haven't been released. Um, That'll be uh, with uh, Restless Records, which is a division of uh, Enigma Records. So that's coming out this month. And um, basically working on some uh, uh, projects for sitcoms uh, uh -huh. for, for television. Which I also, didn't I see something, you're, you're a part-time paramedic? Yeah, well, that's, I kind of got into that about uh, two years ago, and um, I was kind of coerced into it, but I'm really glad I'm doing it because uh, uh, mostly work traffic accidents and things like that. Cause have, you ever, have you ever worked a situation where someone's in a daze after a traffic accident, <laughs> and uh, the paramedic is hovering over them, and they see Bobby Sherman and think they be, maybe a former fan thinks she's died and gone to heaven, or what? <laughs> no, but that has happened. Unfortunately, they think that it's a you know, candid camera segment or something, oh. and they're waiting for Alan Funt to jump out or something. But, uh, <laughs> this was a staged accident. I'm not really hurt. <laughs> yeah, that kind really, of thing. And you're not dying. Uh, no, it's, a, it's been a, a very rewarding experience. I put in about eight hours a week uh, you know, uh, doing the job, and it's, it really is something that's uh, not fun, but... Uh, we definitely need it because we're overloaded here, uh, especially in Los Angeles. Well, Bobby, thank you for joining us. Appreciate your taking time out. How about a hand for Bobby Sherman? Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Hi. I was just wondering what you, was that a worst, do you think, of yeah, our Jimmy's time? Crazy well, I think that. Barry can go with that one. <laughs> well, Jimmy listed it as a worst. Um, I don't know exactly what your reasoning was. It was the lyrics. Most people didn't understand them. No, we understood them. That was the problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I would consider it one of the classics of all time. Yeah, we were, but we were fighting with Jimmy about it. <laughs> That's a great start. I mean, the fact that I, it, it kind of put rock and roll in its place, the perspective of where we were musically at that time. And, you know, number two, Don McLean's voice has the emotion that many singers lack. I mean, his Vincent's. Is, is a great emotion song. Why didn't you like American Pie? Well, uh, you were talking about the place that rock and roll was in the time. Rock and roll wasn't that confused back then. Rock and roll wasn't having that much problems, you know, making sense. It wasn't, no, not as far as making sense, as far as the, where it was and where it was going to. At that time, a lot of artists were getting the big dollars, and it was making the transition to being a big business, as opposed to the Elvis that we talked about, right. where you walk in the studio and just sing and have a good time. Over here, yeah. When he first performed that song, was it true that they threw stuff on, at him on stage and stuff? Or was that I true? wasn't there, so well, don't, don't blame me. It wasn't you, right? It was the first time after five or six minutes, yeah, that the audience got a little... Who was that? Bit of some some of the people oh, really? now, I never did Some that. of the people now, like uh, Whitney Houston and, and Mariah Carey, are supposed to be having a feud. Mm -hmm. Is this true? They're no. different people? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I was at the point that I talked to.